Well, without a doubt, the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in many Tennesseans looking more locally to find a source for meat. And that created a backlog for many processors that were already facing challenges. And the hope is with expansion and new facilities coming online, consumers will continue to seek out a local source. We are booked solid until November 2022. And I think approximately we have about 600 animals on a waiting list. Once COVID hit, um, those backlogs went from five months to 10 months to one year. And now we have processors that have actually booked into 22 or the end of 22. Um, I have one that's got books open into 2023. So those animals aren't even born yet. For Tennessee's local meat processing facilities, it's definitely been a challenging year. COVID-19 prompted consumers to once again seek out a local supply of meat, and processors have been running at full capacity since. But even before COVID, they were already facing challenges of labor and dealing with the ups and downs of the markets. And there have been questions raised as to whether adding state inspection authority would allow more commerce. For those of us processors that invest the time, energy, effort, and money into going through the USDA inspection process. And it's expensive. Um, I got a lot of gray hairs through that time, a lot of sleepless nights. It was very stressful to get there. Um, we're gonna say no. Um, we all need to play by the same rules. And then say a facility wanted to do state and federal inspections, then how would that work? You know, there's, there's so many logistical things. I think that at this point in time, if we're looking at what happened with COVID and trying to handle that, there's no way the state could get that in place in time to have any effect on what's happening right now. Since the last time we spoke, um, at that time we had 16 USDA facilities and 14 of those would harvest for producers. Um, right now we've added three more. So we're at 19 with 16 of those harvesting for producers. And then on the custom exempt side, so those people that are selling animals direct for, for halves or holes to people, um, we've actually went from 57 last year to 64 the last time we spoke, and I think we're sitting at about 73 custom exempt facilities. Hopefully in the next three to four months, we're gonna have another probably five to eight USDA facilities open across the state as well. It's a day I never thought would come. We take meat in its rawest form. <laughs> And, and turn it into packaged product. One of the newest meat processing plants to open in Tennessee is Anderson Meats and Processing in Trousdale County. Founder Steve Anderson, a beef cattle producer in nearby Smith County, says opening his own meat processing plant is filling a need in the industry. Processing capacity was just, it just wasn't there, you know, for everybody. And so we wanted to be able to do it not only for our own self, but to help others you know, achieve their goals because you know, I'm in the livestock business, especially the cattle business, that's my business. Farmers, even themselves, are looking for places to have their animals harvested and processed because there's waiting lists to get in almost anywhere. So this is really nice to have this large a facility, even though it's fairly small still. It's well done, it's engineered correctly, and, it, and they have capacity here that's just good for this community and, and good for this part of the state. We were lucky to to get CARES funding through the Coronavirus Ag and Forestry Business Fund through the state, through uh, Governor Lee's office, and came down through, through the Department of Ag. So of that, we had $50 million. Of that, about 12 million, a little over 12 million was put into the hand of meat processors across the state. So right now we have about 24 custom processors that are expanding. We have three new custom processors coming online. Um, we have 12 USDA processors doing expansion, nine new USDA custom coming online. Virtually, it's really a cost share. I mean, you've got a facility here that's millions of dollars, and it was just a fraction of that is what federal and state money went to. We qualified for the maximum here. I mean, it's public record, $250,000. That'd help anybody. We was tickled to get it, and it's allowed us to do some things, you know, equipment-wise. You know, but I've spent a lot of money here. We're confident in the business, and it's been a dream to be able to not only do our own livestock and, and, and market them um, all the way to the plate. But even with new processing plants coming on board, many facilities are at maximum capacity, as many people have turned to them for meat during the pandemic. And so there's lots of things that are that is challenging what's going on right now, but. But the biggest thing is be patient and to know that if, you, you know, if you've got a processor you've been using for years, 
He's not turning you away because he wants to. Um, the only way we make money is to bring cattle in the building, process them, and send them out the door. And so when we say we can't, I promise you, we can't. And neither can any, any of the other processors. Everybody's, everybody's working long hours right now to try to get everybody taken care of. We've done some consumer surveys to look at what we think they might do post-COVID. Most of them want to stay with their local farm. They now know it's not difficult to go to a farmer's market or to go to their local farm or to even go to a butcher shop, retail counter to pick up the meat that they need. But we're just going to have to wait and see. A lot of people say, yes, that's what we want to continue to do. But when the convenience of a grocery store is presented to them, will they transition back? That's what we're going to have to wait post-COVID and see see really what happens there. Well, the hope is the trend of consumers is to keep buying directly from these processors and their local farmers.